Welcome, everyone. I'm Sandra Bargeman. A few years ago, I wrote and performed a solo show called The Edge of Every Day, which was an exploration of the rough edges and contradictions we all face and grapple with. The show hit a nerve, and the relevance of the topic would only grow over time more than I could have foreseen. So, here we are. Real talk with real people, sharing stories and perspectives that spark provocative invitations to leap out of what's safe. On the edge of every day. Thanks for listening. Hello, everyone. We are live in the hive. Thank you for joining me on this, the 44th episode of The Edge of Every Day here on talkradio.nyc. Can you believe it? 44, the powerful master number. And we've been exploring the edges of every day together for one full year. Happy anniversary to the edge of every day. And happy Halloween, happy Samhain, happy Witches New Year. So much to celebrate this evening. <laughs> and thank you and happy anniversary to talkradio.nyc. Thank you to Sam Leibowitz, our fearless leader. Thank you to our tech wizard, Dylan, our intern, George, and the rest of the staff, and to the other hosts who have been a great source of support to me as I grow this podcast. And for those of you who have become loyal listeners, thank you. Thank you so, so much for spending time with me and my guests. The numbers are looking great, and they're growing, and I couldn't do it without you. So please continue to share this podcast with friends and family and take a moment to subscribe to my YouTube page, Sandra Bargeman, On the Edge of Every Day. And if you're tuning in for the first time, welcome. Tonight we're doing things a little bit differently, uh, only fitting for an anniversary and for Halloween, right? I usually highlight my guests completely, but tonight... To celebrate and recalibrate the show, I'll be sharing more about myself. So please ask questions in the chat and I'll do my best to answer them. And remember, I have a surprise guest coming up later in the show and you won't want to miss this. So stay with me. And of course, I urge you to check out my past episodes with my inspiring guests. You can find them on talkradio.nyc on your favorite podcast platforms, and again, on my YouTube channel. That's Sandra Bargeman, On the Edge of Every Day. For those of you who are here for the first time, this show is about pushing boundaries and exploring rough edges. Through conversations and shared stories with friends and colleagues, it's my hope that we can begin to understand our edges. And what I mean by edges is those places where we are fearful, those places where we are resistant to change, those places where paradoxes and contradictions live in our beliefs and understandings, both internally and collectively in the world around us. Listen, we live in edgy, tumultuous times, and people are complex. And the more we recognize our own edges and get real about them, the more we can help others to do the same. And that, I fully believe, can help to change the world. So thanks again for tuning in. And again, happy Halloween. <laughs> I hope you all had fun dressing up over the weekend and trick-or-treating. Well, this year I saved my costuming for the actual day tonight. Last year, my husband and I and my dear friends, who I lovingly call my adopted children, a shout out to Elizabeth and Jordan, we dressed up as the Rose family from Schitt's Creek. And we were awesome, particularly my husband as Johnny. We rocked it. We had a blast. And tonight, I am wearing a gorgeous hat created for me and my big head <laughs> by Anne Henry Mungmode. A shout out to you, Anne. Thank you again. You can find Anne and all of her glorious creations on Instagram at One Crafty Witch Crochet. Again, that's 
at One Crafty Witch Crochet, which of course will be in the show notes. So actually for the most part, I dress like a witch every year. Um, so what did Lucy say in It's a Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown? A person should always choose a costume which is in direct contrast to her own personality. In my case, I would disagree. I'd say it's in direct alignment with my personality. <laughs> All my life, Halloween has been a favorite holiday. I've always connected to the energy and the intention of Halloween, the connection with the other worlds. And the actor in me loved the costumes and role playing. And it wasn't until I was in my late 20s that I got curious about the true history of Halloween. And it wasn't until I went into Interfaith Seminary in 2005 that I really explored the spiritual tradition of Wicca and witchcraft. And I even attended holiday rituals with a New York City coven, which was a great, great uh, exploration and learning. So what is Halloween? And more importantly, what is Halloween based upon? The ancient Celts, which of course is my lineage, believed that the year was divided into two parts, the lighter half in the summer and the darker half in the winter. And Halloween or Samhain was the division between these halves, the end of the harvest and the time when the veil between our world of the living and that of the other world was at its thinnest, when the spirits of the dead could most readily mingle with the living once again. Later, when the festival was co-opted by Christianity, it became All Hallows' Eve, followed by All Saints' Day, and retained the elements of remembering and honoring the dead. Samhain, also known as Hallowmas, or the Witch's New Year, is always held on October 31st. Ancient Celts marked Samhain, the word meaning summer's end, as the most significant of the four quarterly fire festivals, taking place at the midpoint between the fall equinox and the winter solstice. So in honor of Halloween and Samhain in the Witch's New Year, and for my love of ritual, I offer this invocation. Green is extinguished in a blaze of yellow, red, orange, and brown. Thought loses its power, drawn to the earth where the queen of darkness, the great mother reigns. We offer ourselves up to her, asking for rest, for release, for freedom from the daily, the ordinary, to wander in our dark wildness until the sun returns. And so it is. So happy one year anniversary to the Edge of Every Day podcast. When I created the Edge of Every Day as a solo show in 2013 and performed it in the cabaret rooms of New York City and the surrounding areas, I never would have thought it would have become a podcast. I, I didn't even know what a podcast was, let alone listen to any of, of them. And I never would have thought that the edge of every day would become my spiritual leadership platform. So what does that even mean, that platform, spiritual leadership platform? I think most people who listen to this show understand that I'm a very spiritual person and highly curious about the mystery of life, but they can also see that my show is not a spiritual show per se. I just was interviewed by one of our interns that I mentioned earlier, George Ramirez. Shout out to you, George, about my show um, and its content. And I told him, the people who listen to my show and the people who are guests on my show are a huge spectrum of seekers. Some would call themselves spiritual and others would call themselves nature lovers or even non-believers. 
I want the conversations to be invitations to everyone of all understanding, spirit, God, goddess, optional conversations that push push us out of our comfort zones and call us to our very real questions around the mystery of life. I am not what you would call precious about my spirituality. (laughs) I want realness. And I'm very curious about the spiritual journey, however it's defined. I share this because some of you may not realize that I am a seminary trained and ordained interspiritual minister. I mentioned in my debut episode that I have shared that I'm a, a minister and I've shared that I'm a minister in passing in conversations with some of my other guests, but it bears repeating tonight for this recalibration episode. And I think it is, well, I don't think it, I know it. It is humanity's disconnect from the sacredness of all life through our materialism and capitalism, the patriarchy that has landed us in these tumultuous times. So I want to crank up the heat in my small corner of the world, my edge of every day. So here we go from my website, sandrabargeman.com. So why interfaith interspirituality? I'm completely fascinated by the spiritual journey, the wonderment, the search, be it through religious traditions, mystical contemplation, earth-based wisdom, or a connection to nature. While my personality is drawn to some more than others, I find my quest to be outside of any organized religion. If asked about my tradition of choice, my reply is simple. I'm part human and part spirit. My tradition is curiosity. Interfaith is not a religion, rather a philosophy that espouses the understanding that there are many paths to universal truth. My friends and colleagues, wedding couples and clients span the spectrum of the many ways to explore the spiritual aspect of being human. From atheist to Zen monk and everything in between, what we share is the desire to serve humanity and to awaken to unity consciousness. And I would add the desire to explore the edge between being human and being spirit, the edge between life and death. And that's what Samhain, what Halloween is all about. So I resonate very deeply with all of the earth-based traditions, Druidism, Wicca, Native American wisdom, indigenous cultures, and shamanism. When I was in seminary, and for those who may be curious about that, that was the new seminary for interfaith studies, um, which is the first interfaith seminary in the U.S., which began in 1981. And I received my ordination from TNS at St. John the Divine in New York City and went on to have another two-year seminary journey at One Spirit Interfaith Seminary, also in New York City, uh, for spiritual counseling. But as I was saying, it was in seminary that I reconnected with the ancient roots of theater, where they were one and the same with the ancient spirituality roots where the gods and the goddesses were bringing back wisdom from the other worlds and sharing that. And it was this connection that really sparked my idea for my production company, Sacred Stages LLC. And in addition, for four years, I was the Dean of first year students at the new seminary where I also taught ritual. And I brought this love of ritual into the structuring of the solo show, creating it as I lovingly call a cabaret ritual, part ritual, part cabaret, the edge of every day. So my love of ritual is deep. At Samhain, in particular, we realize the knowledge that death is close, but also that our lives matter that this present moment is always a portal, a circle of white flame that holds space for things wildly new and very old, 
all of our work is ancestor work and in the great fertility tradition of witchcraft we are the womb and the tomb and we sit on the edge of life and death calling new possibilities into the world mm. on the edge of life and death calling new possibilities into the world and so it is and as some of you know, I am a contributing author to a book entitled On the Shoulders of Mighty Women by one of my dear friends, Leslie Michaels, whom I've had on this show. She was a guest on episode 30, which you can find on my YouTube channel, Sandra Bartman <laughs> on the Edge of Every Day. And I'd like to share a short reading from that chapter, which is called Anger and the Reluctant Leader that speaks to my long and deep understanding of ritual and my connection to nature. The most unforeseen choices in life can put you on a path full of unforeseen awakening and fulfillment. In the early 90s, I made a strange and jaw-dropping decision to move away from the bustling life as an actor and performer in a bustling metropolitan area to a life in a very remote one. This big city girl with matching big city hair and shoes and nary a piece of flannel owned moved from New York City to a 3,000 acre nature preserve and biological research station in a small brigadoon of a town in upstate New York. In a nutshell, I was terribly angry at life and needed some quietude, which I got in spades with my shocking move, landing in a small cabin in the woods, smaller than my New York City apartment, resplendent with a wood stove and a composting toilet, dubbed unironically, the throne. I would say that it was my love for my then boyfriend that fueled my monumental leap, but I'd be lying. Our little cabin on the preserve was nestled by a huge pond with a path around it that I would walk, sometimes with my love and more often alone. The woods around the pond intrigued me as I walked through three distinctly different habitats. One, a young forest, small trees with lush undergrowth, swaths of sunlight filtering through. The second, more mature, a bit darker, finally a hemlock forest, majestic, formidable, and magical. It always seemed as if a wood nymph or fairy would be peeking up from one of the gnarled roots. One night I had a dream about the hemlock forest. In this dream, it was a nighttime, and with a bright full moon, I started down the path. When at last I got to the hemlocks, moonlight was dappling down through the branches and everything was alive with an expectant quality. In the embrace of the hemlock forest, I began a ritual. I searched for a spot in which to lie between some jutting roots. And when I found it, I lay back, resting my head in a base crook of a tree. Immediately, my body began to tingle from head to toe. My breathing became rhythmic and an inner pulsing began in my heart region. And slowly it grew more persistent, filling my entire body. Anticipatedly, I started to split open with no surprise on my behalf. My body simply opened up in a long line from my chin to my pelvis. As I opened, a bright, white light came shining out straight up into the trees and from within another me sat up as if sleeping and was now only awakened this new me was iridescent sparkling with light she looked around and finally stood up stepped out onto the forest floor turned to look down at the old me still cradled in the hemlock roots Knowingly, the old me smiled up at the new me 
and slowly began to close herself back up as the new me bent down and picked her up, hugging the old me to herself. And she began to walk slowly in the moonlight through the hemlock to the edge of the pond. At this new me, as this new me walked, the old me she was carrying began to crumble and dissolve to dust, floating out across the sparkling moonlit water. It was with Mother Nature that I began to let go and to howl with some real power. And for the first time in my life, I could begin to face my anger and my rebellion. So why was I so angry? About what and with whom? Why are any women in this world angry? Ah, there's a, there's a mouthful. A mouthful for women around the globe and a mouthful for witches. And with that question, it's time for us to take a break. So you are listening to The Edge of Every Day on talkradio.nyc. You can hear us on your podcast platform of choice. Up next, what makes a witch and my surprise guest. So stay tuned. Are you a business owner? Do you want to be a business owner? Do you work with business owners? Hi, I'm Stephen Fry, your small and medium-sized business or SMB guy. And I'm the host of the new show, Always Friday. While I love to have fun on my show, we take those Friday feelings of freedom and clarity to discuss popular topics in the minds of SMBs today. Please join me and my various special guests on Friday at 11 a.m. on talkradio.nyc. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your conscious consultant. And on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. Are you on edge? Hey, we live in challenging, edgy times, so let's lean in. I'm Sandra Bargeman, the host of The Edge of Every Day, which airs each Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on talkradio.nyc. Tune in live with me and my friends and colleagues as we share stories and perspectives about pushing boundaries and exploring our rough edges. That's The Edge of Every Day on Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC. Uplift, educate, empower. Chipping around, kick my brain to the ground. These are the days it never rains. On the edge of every day, and we are back on our special Halloween episode. So, trick or treat, which one is it? Well, here on the edge of every day, it's both, of course. <laughs> so, who is your favorite witch? Hmm. Well, I can tell you that my first favorite was um, Samantha on Bewitched. Actually, it really wasn't Samantha. It was her mother, Andora. So I'm, I'm aging myself very easily with, with that. So go check it out. If you do not know, Bewitched, everyone, go Google that. Go check that out on YouTube. I also love Ursula in The Little Mermaid. But probably my most favorite witch is um, the witch from the musical Into the Woods by Stephen Sondheim who famously sings, I'm not good, I'm not nice, I'm just right, I'm the witch. Ooh, people pleasing that women are conditioned to cultivate. Oh, I mentioned that in my chapter, that people pleasing as a tactic, but wow, 
And that witch, she just cuts through it. I'm not good. I'm not nice. I'm just right. I'm the witch. That line succinctly sums up the myth or the archetype of the whip, witch as the angry, vengeful, righteous, lonely, banished hag, old hag. All of the powerful, emotional, passionate, intuitive traits of the feminine have been relegated to the shadow, to darkness, have gone underground in this mythos, this archetype. But the great feminine goddesses throughout time were complex with qualities that were both light and dark, the life-giving, creative, nurturing qualities, as well as the qualities of anger and destruction, independence, sensuousness, and sensuality. Sound familiar? Still. After wave after wave of feminists uprising for equality, equity, and inclusion, and still in 2020, 2022, excuse me, women must and are challenging the status quo of the patriarchy to reclaim their complete feminine hood and to maintain their equity. Women around the world are angry. And like the witch, very rightly so. And they are channeling this anger to awaken others, to protest, to claim their own voice and power, to redefine female leadership, to care for Mother Earth. Women's wisdom, sensuality, spiritual strength, and connection to the Earth has long been feared by the patriarchy and the church which of course are one and the same. With that understanding, you can begin to see the connection of the patriarchy and the massive climate crises that we are facing. A friend of mine, Joan Kane, who is a wonderful director and actor and who directed me in a fantastic show about a witch, Sycorax, based on the witch from The Tempest. Uh, and I had Joan on my show on episode four. Well, Joan recently gifted me a book called Bee Time, Lessons from the Hive by Mark L. Winston. And I used it in my research for my conversation with Rebecca Louie, the executive director of the Bee Conservancy in New York City. And that was episode 40. And in the book, I discovered the work of Nakaya Seeds sacred beekeeper. And through her, I discovered the numinous podcast hosted by Carmen Spaniola. According to Carmen, there are two attributes that make a witch. And those are animism and activism. So what is animism? It is the belief in the ensoulment of the world, that everything has a soul or an oversoul, if you will. Trees, rocks, the water, insects, everything. All are connected and all are in relationship and there is no hierarchy of importance or dominion over any other being. I would also call this a deep understanding of planetary ecosystems as well as unity consciousness. And activism, the protection of the oppressed, an uprising against the privatization of the common resources that should be available to all beings. The protection of the oppressed, the protection of common spaces, the protection of ways of being, the protection of agency over one's own body. When I was on that biological research station, I was to come upon a book that became one of my most treasured books, Women Who Run With the Wolves by Clarissa Pinkola Estes. And it became truly a Bible for me and I'm sure many other women. And in it, she writes, within every woman, there is a wild and natural creature, a powerful force filled with good instincts, passionate creativity and ageless knowing. Her name is Wild Woman, 
but she is an endangered species. The wild woman would defy the rules, traditions, and standards of patriarchal society, as above all, she is moved by a longing for freedom, not only for herself, but of humanity. In her quest for love, she puts herself through the most unlikely situations to expose truth to the world. She is here to teach us all a lesson of light, love, and freedom, the one true nature of the soul. Due to her choices, she will suffer profoundly, but she will always continue in her adventure in a fascinating quest for love, truth, and freedom. The wild woman is the witch. She is the one that owns both her light and her shadow. She is whole and unafraid of her completeness. And this is what I mean by the edge of every day, the willingness to be real about our complexities and to celebrate our light and to have the courage to seek the wisdom and the power of our shadows. The German word for which is hex, which means fence. And the word for ha the word hag also means fence. Witches ride the fence. They are fence riders as they push the boundaries, push the borders, balance the edges, the edges between the human and the divine, the human and the underground, the edges between the real and the other world. The witch is the veil. And with that, it's time for a break. Remember, all of our past episodes can be found on my YouTube channel, Sandra Bargeman on the edge of every day. So please subscribe. And when we come back, it will be time to meet my surprise guest. So stay tuned. Are you passionate about the conversation around racism? Hi, I'm Reverend Dr. TLC, host of the Dismantle Racism Show, which airs every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on talkradio.nyc. Join me and my amazing guests as we discuss ways to uncover, dismantle, and eradicate racism. That's Thursdays at 11 o'clock a.m. on talkradio.nyc. Are you a small business trying to navigate the COVID-19 related employment laws? Hello, I'm Eric Sauber, employment law business law attorney and host of the new radio show, Employment Law Today. On my show, we'll have guests to discuss the common employment law challenges business owners are facing during these trying times. Tune in on Tuesday evenings from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern time on talkradio.nyc. Hey everybody, it's Tommy D, the nonprofit sector connector coming at you from my attic. Each week here on talkradio.nyc, I host a program, Philanthropy and Focus. Nonprofits impact us each and every day, and it's my focus to help them amplify their message and tell their story. Listen each week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc, now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Chipping around, kick my brain to the ground. These are the days it never rained. And we are back on the edge of every day, and it is time for my special guest. <laughs> oh, the woman! There's an entrance. <laughs> My costume's falling apart because it's held together with hot glue. Oh, oh my, my God. Oh, oh my hot God. lips, hot lips, hot lips. Yeah, baby. Oh, oh my goodness. Me. I got dog tags and everything. Oh, <laughs> my. 
you <laughs> you are the hottest hot lips ever. Well, <laughs> I could just go before we dive in. I I just want to do some bragging on you. I got to read your incredible CV oh and goodness. brag on my woman. Okay. Okay. Here it comes. Grammy Award winning vocalist Leslie Ellis performs live across the USA <laughs> and Europe with hit songwriter Casey Kelly in the new duo Kelly and Ellis. Through her career, Leslie has sung with many artists, including Celine Dion on My Heart Will Go On from the movie Titanic, for which Leslie won the Grammy and Thomas Dolby on his latest album, 40, featured on Hyperactive. She sang the original soundtrack song, Six Times Around the Sun, for the CBS miniseries, Perfect Murder, Perfect Town, and she's done countless TV, radio jingles, and song demos for Sony Music. In 2007, her self-penned flyer song, was adopted by the U.S. Navy and made into a video as a tribute to the troops and their families. Early in 2009, she re-recorded the song with production by Ron Oates, shot additional video, and, has, and this has culminated in an even more magnificent presentation of the song and the video. She's also written songs, dozens of which have been cut by artists, including the Bellamy Brothers and New York City-based recording artist David, David Ippolito. In 1994, Leslie's original songs appeared in the musical Cowboy Cafe and were performed live at the show's premiere in North Carolina. As an actress, Leslie has appeared on television and the Broadway stage, Cats, La Cage aux Faux, and City of Angels, among others, and in the films, The New True Charlie Wu, Happy New Year, Mr. Cates, and the feature film, Unconditional. In 2007, she starred in an independent film called My Name is Wallace, which was invited to the Cannes Film Festival. Leslie also has a successful career as a voiceover artist, and book narrator. She now tours in the award-winning duo Kelly and Ellis with hit songwriter husband Casey Kelly. Welcome Leslie Ellis. I mean, you know, when you I know, when it's you're so weird old. hearing your CV like that. Well, I mean, when you're old, like you have stuff, it's like a list. I should yeah. just do like a bullet list. I like I, I feel like I know. Well, listen, I like I like a hefty you have a hefty CV and I like to share a hefty C oh, CV you're sweet. and My you're girl. not on the show the whole time, girl. And I want everyone to know everything about you. Okay. I know it, it hogs up a little time and we don't have a ton of time, but, but no. this particular let's episode, get into it. but so let's Halloween. get into it. So we know each other from CMU folks. That's how yeah. she and I met when we were bambinis, when we little were babies. all of 18 years old at Carnegie Mellon. Oh my God. Oh my God, Carnegie Mellon. Oh my God, in Pittsburgh. Oh my that. God, it's in Pittsburgh. It's right by, you know, Squirrel Hill and that. <laughs> it's like that. Yeah, I can't get together with Leslie and not do that, folks. Just indulge us. We have to okay. do our Pittsburgh. We just have to do the Pittsburgh accent. Yeah. But you were a real Pittsburgher. But anyway. I was a real Pittsburgher. And, 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 oh my God, I chat. I diverse. Uh, well, it's all good. Please, we're just chatting. And um, yeah. yeah. And yes, and thankfully I didn't have a wicked Pittsburghese accent. And it, what little I had got beaten out nope. of me. Like a lot of things got beaten out of us at CMU. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I went there. So um, you so you showed up as Hot Lips Houlihan because you are a Hot Lips. And I love this because Hot Lips is a healer and, and witches are healers. I, I just love this and you know so, which is women healers. which is women women in their sensuality women in yeah. their power women taking care of themselves yeah right. amen very yeah. powerful choice love it so um so who's your favorite witch ms ellis okay i know we prepared this but i do <laughs> have to say <laughs> i don't want to be like gross but like i have to say that my favorite witch is the character of Grizabella in Cats. That is a character I played in the um, in one of the Broadway tours of the show. And um, she is 
the embodiment of an ish, of an, of a witch because she's she's um, cast out. She's shamed. She's downtrodden. She's special. Mm. She feels things. She knows things. She knows things. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that was a really intimate experience for me. Incredible. I can so imagine. And so in terms of, of uh, how did you relate to, to playing her? How, how, what did you learn about yourself playing her? It's interesting. Like, I don't know that I knew this at the time and I was only 24 years old. Oh my God. But I was, I know, but I was also born an old soul as you were born, born an old soul, my girl. And I, you know, as a kid, I was a total nerd. I was a, you know, a music nerd, a drama nerd. Before that, I was a, please don't talk to her. If you can try to beat her up girl. And, um, you know, bullied and all that. So, um, I was, I was Grisabella as a child. Mm. And I don't think I knew this at the time because, you know, when you're 20, you think like, I'm going to be a star. So, you know, I don't think I knew it at the time, but I think that in retrospect, looking back at it, doing the role allowed me to, to, to be me. Mm. You know, I was told I was too emotional, too, uh, gentle to whatever and and um like every woman like every witch right like every woman like every witch and so i could go out there on stage for whatever amount of time i was singing memory or the other things i sang and i could be me yeah unapologetically without anybody giving me any crap about it yeah. <laughs> so uh, it was a really special experience very oh. deep experience it really changed me a lot i can imagine yeah this makes me think about um, in this season of letting go um, in the story of Isabel Grisabella mm. and of witches everywhere this that this line that I have from my my solo show where mm. I have you know the grief of Grisabella the grief and the anger of is Grisabella and witches and in the grief section of the show, I have this line, I've been leveled and shattered by grief, deaths of many kinds, mm -hmm. including the death of who I thought I should be. Oof. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think there is, well, first of all, I don't think there's a human that can't relate to that. And, but at this time, this time of letting go of, of Samhain, of Halloween, of of thinking about those who have passed away and thinking of loss and grief and mm -hmm. um yeah i mean um i recently had an experience with you mm -hmm. where i feel like for the first time in probably my entire life i said oh oh god this is what i have to do i have to to embrace this grief and i have to dig down and sit in it really, instead of trying to make everyone happy, don't be too emotional, don't be too needy and all that stuff. So that statement's very, you know, yeah. very important to me. Yeah. It was a powerful, powerful ritual. And I think, you know, you, I, I loved what you shared with me that it, it was difficult for you to step into ritual as I think it is for a lot of people, but, yeah. but I think, people very quickly come to understand the power of transformation. And as you know, the, the, this is the world of magic. This is the world of witchcraft, the, the power of intention and the power of transformation and the willingness to live in the liminal space. Like Samhain yeah. is completely a liminal space. And it was really right. fascinating to watch the two of us choose what we needed to choose and to set the intention of course that's the other important element and, right and for both of us it was around loss yeah growth and you know first loss then growth yeah and transformation the chrysalis you know you know the butterflies my spirit animal so 
<laughs> I do know that. I do know that. Well, yeah. um, I, I very much want to now uh, play your song, but Sam has here that we have a, a minute to break. Sam, is it okay if we play the song now or should I wait till after the break? Can you toss that into the chat? When we come back. Okay. okay. So we're going to take a lovely break. I am here with the luscious Leslie Ellis, one my of my girl. dearest soul sisters of life. I and like when it. we come back, we are going to hear the song that she has composed, sung, produced, and we played this together. Yeah, and played, played, and produced. All, every element you hear is her. Um, and we played this at the end of our ritual and I can't even begin to tell you how healing it was so know, yeah. stay Beautiful. with us when we come back with Leslie Ellis on the edge of every day stay tuned hey everybody it's Tommy D the nonprofit sector connector coming at you from my attic each week here on talkradio.nyc I host a program philanthropy and focus Nonprofits impact us each and every day, and it's my focus to help them amplify their message and tell their story. Listen each week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on talkradio.nyc. In a post-COVID world, you may have many unanswered questions regarding your health. Are you looking to live a healthier lifestyle? Do you have a desire to learn more about mental health and enhance your quality of life? Or do you just want to participate in self-understanding and awareness? I'm Frank R. Harrison, host of Frank About Health, and each Thursday, I will tackle these questions and work to enlighten you. Tune in every Thursday at 5 p.m. on talkradio.nyc, and I will be Frank About Health to advocate for all of us. Calling all pet lovers. Pet Avengers, assemble! On the Professionals and Animal Lovers show, we believe the bond between animal lovers is incredibly strong. It mirrors that bond between pets and their owners. Through this program, we come together to learn, educate, and advocate. Join us live every Wednesday at 2 p.m. at talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Chipping around, kick my brain to the ground. These are the days it never rained. But it falls on the edge of every day. And we are back with my soul sister, the gorgeous and talented Leslie Ellis. Girl, so without further ado, I'm going to dive in and and let's. I, I, I'm I, I'm I'm doing a lot of things here, so let, fingers crossed. Here we go. We're going to screen share and share this incredible song. Remember, Leslie has done every single thing you hear. Here we go. The world slips away when I lie in your arms There's nothing that's hard and there's nothing that's wrong Don't let go of my hand 
gracious and that was what the ritual was about was about uh healing a part of my heart that i mean that's i didn't know it when we started the ritual but that's what it became with the heart rock uh, healing a part of my heart that i wasn't ready to deal with so so that's what that song's about and and that was exactly what i was working on and the the, the power of letting go and the resistance and and be it a relationship a loved one an ancestor a self identity mm -hmm. you no know, that's the season we are in and yeah. the power of ritual to be able to stay present with that it was it was very moving and i'm yeah so grateful i got to do it with you i'm so grateful you're in my life well, in a bigger way, yeah. <laughs> Duh. What? <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. So let's talk about you a little bit. I want to know why you wanted to start this podcast in the first place, Sam, because oh. this is a lot of work. You're like a billion hours a week, Chuck. This is a ton. Yeah, it's a ton of work. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a ton of work. And uh, I wanted to do this podcast because it was COVID and uh, I didn't have uh, anything yes. else. And all of my work had gone poof. And I, um, you know, I was booked to do a show. I was booked to do um, a bunch of weddings. I had some cabaret stuff. It poof, gone, as, yeah. you know, was the case with everyone. But, yep. but I, you know, and I had to wallow around and roll in the mud and be very sad and, and angry and, you know, all of those things that I 
I love to do. Um, <laughs> I am rather where women I kind of love my anger. You know, it, 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 it I it can works roll with us, it. Though. Yeah, I can roll with it. I'm sorry, but, Mitch. It's important. <laughs> yeah, I can roll with it. Um, oh my God, three minutes to end. Oh, oh gosh. Uh, so anyway, real quick, uh, it was because I wanted to, I needed an outlet. Yeah. And, you know, you were one of the people that I talked to. I see, you know, I, sure. I'm thinking about doing this podcast, but I think we need another podcaster like we need needles stuck in our eyes. But of course, that was the way that I was <laughs> hiding. Yeah, I was hiding. And what yeah. if COVID was instrumental for everyone around the world to hear the call to step more fully into sharing themselves sharing their voice and if there's yeah. a time at these crossroads that we are in here on planet earth i heard it and i wanted to share my voice in a bigger way and so i stepped into this and just you know it was a bit like spaghetti on the wall i found out i loved it and here You're we amazing are amazing at it I, I mean i've loved these shows and i think it's really important i told you a hundred times i think it's really important some of us need to hear what you have to share with us to help us through this crap you know so well thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you it's yeah, been yeah. a joy to do so i uh, i gotta share you can find leslie at leslieellis.com at kelly and ellis.com and are you are at uh leslie ellis on insta oh it's kelly and ellis on insta it's kelly and ellis. oh it's always Kelly you know, Ellis generally. It's, uh, it's either Kelly and Ellis or Leslie Ellis or uh, Working Jane Music. And oh, we can that's find right. you. Working Jane Music. And we can find me, SandraBargeman.com, at Sandra Bargeman uh, right. on Insta. I'm on, you know, I'm all over the place. My YouTube channel, yep. once again, Sandra Bargeman, yep. On the Edge of Every Day, Run, Don't Walk, and Subscribe. Um, mm -hmm. real quick, we've gone through a lot of resources on the shoulders of mighty women, B time lessons from the hive, the luminous podcast and stay tuned. I have Amanda Yates Garcia on who wrote memoir of a witch on November 28th. So, so I just want to say cheers to you, my dear. Oh, Cheers to you. Thank you so much for being on the show and cheers oh, to everyone who's listening in. Thank you. Happy Halloween. Happy Samhain. I have a quick closing prayer for this incredible season. Courage, integrity, wisdom, cleverness, kindness, and compassion. Yeah. These are the virtues I believe in. This is who I am. My mother and her mother, my grandmothers and their grandmothers, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Sojourner Truth, Susan B. Anthony, Eleanor Roosevelt. These are ancestors among many I admire. These are the powerful voices I hear. I am blessed by their knowledge and their example. I am inspired by their action. Today, I will cry, forgive, listen, learn, let go, and let my tears water the seeds of my future. Within my own gifts, I will do as the ancestors did. I will take part in the grand history of humanity. I will come alive. And with that aliveness, I will be a hero in my way, on my own edge of every day, to honor their memory. And so it is. Thanks, Cheers, everyone. My girl. Thanks, my woman. I will see you all next week. Woman! <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is our last dance. This is our sandwich. Under pressure. Under pressure. Under pressure.